Norwegian horse. No, Mongolian horse. Oh. Welcome to the Heart to Heartland podcast. Here are your hosts. Welcome back to another episode of Heart to Heartland. Uh, your two favorite people of all time are here. Um, I'm Isabel. <laughs> And I'm sorry, man. I mean, it's New Year, old us, I guess. Yeah. No, it's like New Year, say me. Yeah. You know? Mm. Except like older by a few days or something. I haven't seen you since last year. Oh, it's been a whole. Uh, you're really going to do that? <laughs> no, it's like my favorite thing. It's my favorite dad joke of all time is when it's New Year's and I'm like, I'll see you next year. Okay. I have to confess. That's me. I love that one as well. Kind of in the oh in my the god, lim- really? Yeah, in the language, oh, like you know. Yeah. I guess I'll see you next year, or wherever. Yeah. And or, I think it's hilarious, absolutely hysterical. And I don't know why. It's like <laughs> I'll laugh at my own jokes because it's just so funny. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's 2022. Yeah, and uh, since we last talked, it feels like forever. Like literally, not yeah. only because yeah. of the dad joke kind of way but like yeah and if you're watching this on youtube you're gonna see that some of this was filmed like about a month ago i think at this point so yeah we have we don't even have a lot to talk about today as the day we're filming this speaking of lame jokes like i i've done these like things like a couple of the times because of the time difference between us and i'm always like right like hello from the future <laughs> but literally we are doing time traveling within this episode because we film the guest part like way 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 like way back coming to you from a whole year yeah but it's funny though because i was still in 2020 well 20 wait what year is it <laughs> i was still in 2021 when you went into 2022 because you're like eight hours ahead or whatever yeah so how's the how's the future how's 2022 looking I mean, over there same old same old unfortunately <sighs> but there are flying okay. cars now so no way yeah well, that makes things easier. I guess I'm just going to fly across the pond then. See you soon. <laughs> Speaking of something coming across the pond. Something oh, arrived. Yeah. Um, I can't believe how fast it came because, like, I did pay for it to come sooner, but it was still, like, eight weeks, and it, it's only been, like, four, so. Yeah, and it's been sitting on my desk for a couple of days because I wanted to open it, like, while we're filming. When I <laughs> went to get it from the post office, I have this, like, a paper that has, like, a right. co- code or whatever. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, um, hello, I have this. And they were like, okay, hold on. And then they looked it up and they were like, no, nothing, nothing. There's nothing here. And I was like, are you kidding me? Because I know that this is not something yeah. cheap. And I know that you went like all out for me to get it in, you know, in time. So the the person who was trying to find the package was like, okay, I'm just going to like ask someone else to come in. And so they did and they kind of explained like, I don't know what's going on. Like the code isn't working. Then someone else came and they were like, um, hi, um, I've been here a couple of days, like coming in and out and asking for my package. Like, is it here now? And I'm like, is this me? Like, am I gonna come here tomorrow and ask if the package has arrived? But um, they were like, I don't know, this code is useless. Like, I'm just gonna go and see if I can find it, like, based on, you know, the shape and size. And they found it. But I was, I was a little terrified that, you know, it's, it, it got lost. But and that is why I got three hundred dollar insurance on it. <laughs> and I kind of know what's inside because I had to declare yeah. it. And also, yeah. it says so in the it package. Says, well, yeah, I knew you were gonna know before you got it whether it was because of the shape, but you have to declare it. So I yeah. had to tell you, like but a um, week or so ago, what it was. <laughs> Even still... though well, I thought for sure you wouldn't know what it was, but you didn't. Yeah, because you I, had an idea, but you didn't know. So I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. you get to be a little bit surprised. Yeah, because um, we actually talked about this during our uh, like last filming session. But uh, I ended up um, cutting that part out because the episode was so long. 
but I I didn't really know for sure what was in it. But then you said something like um, I wrote "Do not bend" on it, so I was like, "Oh, I got an idea." But okay. By the way, if I sound weird, it's because I lost my voice over the oh, yeah. holidays. So I'm yeah, slowly we got getting it back. Two hours later. Okay. Yeah, don't don't open don't open. Yeah, that was that was so they don't bend. That's just a random. Wow. Oh, you know that you should have known. <laughs> you know what that's from? <laughs> that piece of cardboard was from one of my Heartland containers. It was it was something that you know production had sent me years ago. So it says rescued horse on it because it was you know from production. Do you want me to open this first or? Look you should open the... that off camera. Unless you open it and then don't show it on camera. Okay, I'll, I'll just show my reaction afterwards. Yeah! Okay, so... It's not family friendly, sorry. Piece of paper? Like, seriously? No, but, um... Oh my god. Look who it is! I'm so, so happy you got it. Okay, you gotta get a frame for that and put it, like, behind you or something. I might, because it you looks kind of cool that she's it like it matches with the aesthetic of what's happening at your apartment yeah. so it works true i love these promos so the absolute best promo pictures they've ever done for this show yeah. so yeah they so i got the i got three so i got the amber and spartan one <laughs> amber and spartan amy and spartan and then i got jack and then lou and jenna asked me for the eight Amy and Spartan one because she's absolutely obsessed with Spartan too. So I was like, okay, that can be your Christmas present. And then obviously the Sean one is way up there somewhere. And then I was like, well, that doesn't seem fitting that I don't give my best Heartland friend uh, one of the Infinity Stones. So I did. <laughs> the Heartland <laughs> Infinity Stones. Okay, I'm looking at the card. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Merry Crisis. Merry Chrysler. <laughs> Merry Chrysler. Yeah. I was not <laughs> sober when I had those made. Do you so... remember what it, what's in? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm not going to show you the picture, but it says... No, don't. Don't. It says, have yourself a Merry Crisis. Love this bitch. And then it says, happy holidays. My friend and now co-host, look at us. Please enjoy the gift. It was expensive. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I love me. That's hilarious. It's not Hallmark oh per se, but it's no. close. Yeah, say. you know, Hallmark was shaking when I sent it in. They were like, yeah. no. <laughs> well, I did want to ask you how your Christmas was, though. How your holiday season went uh, well other than losing my voice it was yeah fun. yeah well good did you get presents <clears throat> um i got three pairs of socks which that's is nice you, that's what santa brought you well from different hey. santas i guess <laughs> okay but i love socks so i don't mind fair yeah that's fair and yeah. one of one of them were made by my um my friend so I oh my god, it. that's adorable. Yeah, so I always appreciate when someone's, like, giving it a personal touch. Yeah. Yeah. How about that's you? Good. I mean, I know something, but... So, Christmas Eve, I tested positive for COVID-19. <laughs> I'm getting... I get home from work on Christmas Eve, and I'm, like everybody else, speeding, because it's like... We're on holiday time. Let's just get home and it's mm -hmm. Christmas Eve. No, that's not what happened at all. I'm home for maybe five minutes and then I get a text like your results are in. It was not good, guys. And then I had to make the, hey, sorry to break it to you, but your holidays are screwed because you've been exposed to COVID-19 phone calls. I don't do phone calls, first of all. So I did not have a good holiday. So and I just spent christmas day on shrooms because i'm like i don't i'm alone so i'm just gonna take shrooms so so merry crisis is right yeah isn't it funny how accurate that was like i made these cards in november and yeah. i put merry crisis on them because i thought it was funny i didn't think it was going to be accurate oh by the time i actually got my test results i had been you know basically 100 percent. i got no taste or smell 
And that's what made me cry. I was like, the fever, okay, fine. The crippling back pain, okay, whatever. The taste? No, on Christmas? I don't get to eat cookies and them taste good on Christmas? This should be illegal. I would rather have COVID on my birthday. The timing, I mean, the timing is always wrong. But yeah, like, oh, for sure. But, but I got lots of good presents. It just sucks when you're opening them by yourself. Uh, yeah. Well, you did um, do something Christmassy, right? When, <laughs> when I, my friend was the one who gave me COVID and we were together and it was just inevitable. So I was like, well, we're going to do our Christmas because I'm pretty sure I'm positive for COVID. And once you test positive, then you have to stay home. But I'm like, I got COVID from her. So that I went over there and we did our Christmas. Mm. Yeah. And so that was everyone who was sick basically went because we were everybody's sick right now like everybody so i was like whatever i'm breaking the law here but then um by the time like four days after i got tested is when they finally i was like oh my god by the time they actually got the public health got a hold of me it was already 10 days my 10 days of isolation was up i was like okay but yeah everyone and their cousin has covid right now so i'm an introvert despite <laughs> despite this podcast i absolutely like i don't like leaving my house i love my group of friends we do everything together we don't leave our house i order everything online so i the fact that i got covid is i would say a miracle but not a good one yeah yeah <laughs> not the christmas miracle you want mm -mm. and then last night one of my people one of the old people i used to party with at the senior citizen trailer park died of covid <laughs> no i know i thought you were gonna say something funny but no that, that's no. not funny it's not and <sighs> so um i gotta go deal with that after this but yeah one less one less old stoner at the trailer park Rest in peace, Linda. Mm. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> let's move on to the updates. Yeah, maybe something happier. <laughs> I um, just like totally destroyed this. Okay, you're like, wow, like, like, why it, did you have to die, Linda? Seriously, if people were depressed already, like that. Yeah, you came to the right place. So, as we know, season 15 has come to an end, so there's a lot of time to look at other stuff. Cindy has a Hallmark Happenings podcast episode out where she talks about her latest Hallmark movies, uh, Joy for Christmas and Toying with the Holidays. Coming out next week, actually, um, is Kevin's movie, The Wedding Veal on Hallmark Channel, so that's January 8th. Uh, Netherland uh, currently has season 14 airing on With Love Channel and New Fate Network. So if you're in Netherlands, check those out. And if you're in Germany, um, season 13 is now uh, streaming on RTL+. Like I mentioned earlier, like a couple episodes ago, Finland finally has um, seasons uh, 1 to 7, and they're soon going to add seasons 8 to 11 uh, on January 20th on Ule Arena. So if you're a fellow Finn and you haven't, you know, been able to watch the show, now's your time. But um, speaking of streaming, Portland is a uh, top 10 show of 2021 as voted by Roku streamers. So pretty good. That's me, I guess. Yeah. I stream it on Roku. I didn't vote anything, though, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but it still made it to the top, so I guess. That's... Yeah, that's... I know. It's totally flopping, eh? Yeah, like, everyone yeah. said it flopped after season 13. Such yeah. a flop. Is everyone, like, ready for another wild ride of comments of the week? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I went... These, these comments aren't from, like, new content or posts. I went, you know... Deep. I just wanted to find good ones. So, yeah, I went, like, weeks, maybe even months ago. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> this one was on one of Graham's posts, and we normally just don't we avoid that topic, but this comment is so funny. Stuff Seth makes, who has like this American flag with like an eagle, like a whole patriot thing happening, commented, mm -hmm. This is why I love you in a manly, freedom loving way, not a sick weirdo way. Yeah, I I, I get there's that whole manly loving way and there's that what what is sick weirdo way either you're the other or somewhere in the spectrum yeah apparently where would you say you are in terms of loving heartland in a manly <laughs> not in a weird way no but like i have it tattooed on me jeez yeah so so closer to manly loving way yeah a manly manly loving way yeah what about you yeah, I would say the same. I mean, yeah, I, I, I only cry manly tears when I'm watching it. Me and, too. Yeah. yeah. But you know how like men aren't like supposed to cry, so we really shouldn't, you no, know? No, but that's right. different. Like only if yeah. you cry manly tears. Right. If like, it's manly tears, then it's okay. Gotcha. Yeah, like full okay. of testosterone. Like if you really want to cry the manly way, um, you really have to train your like um eyelids to push it out it's like a muscle what like your your eyelids have to be really toned to push out the testosterone fill oh, here like your your eyelids have to have abs <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying basically oh okay that makes I sense so abs your eyelid does a push up and then a tear falls. Yes. I'm I'm almost crying manly tears, but I'm not. <laughs> Stop working out over there, God. Okay. <sighs> okay. One of our infamous one of my favorite people who comments in general is Jack Hunter. And this is on YouTube. This was only from five days ago, so this is fresh. People, please, you got to get a clue. As long as Lou and Tim are in charge of Heartland, they will do anything in their power to keep Ty gone. They are so jealous and envy of Ty the character and Amy's real husband also, my opinion. Interesting. See, yeah. like, that's concerning. I feel like that is in a manly way. That's kind of weird, you know? Yeah, but I do remember, you know, that scene with Lou and Tim sitting on um, Ty's grave, you know, keeping yeah, him laughing. out. Yeah, they like, were laughing. Yeah. Because yeah, they was, planned that. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, I think he might have a point. Like, I mean, if Amy only knew what, you know, her sister and dad were yeah. doing like that's... and and amy has a real life husband that they don't like either well that's... two worlds collide <laughs> yeah i'm like i must have missed that episode i know i feel like i had like a stroke when i was reading it hmm you know? yeah but, but yeah. I, it's a good thing someone's keeping track because he is it's, it's chicken soup for the soul truly yeah Anthony said, no way can she find a new love interest. It would be very disrespectful to, not ties, T-I-E-S, ties in his memory. If they shed together all they want true to get to where they wind it up and all the work they did and all the sacrifice that I made for her and not they went into their own business. Amy cannot love another man the way she loved T-I-E, tie, in that is not fair. The show is dead. No one's even watching. I just heard a lot of English words, but somehow I, I understood none of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, I like how I like, I'm trying to figure what? out whose point of view this is coming from because at first I thought it was talking about just in the third person or something, but hmm. then this person said, I made for her. All the sacrifice I made for her. It's like a it's a brain teaser. I like these people have some kind of inside scoop that we clearly don't. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Like let me in on the club, fam. Yeah. And then someone underneath said, Dermot said it's obvious Amber Marshall does not look at YouTube. If she did, she would soon figure out how people feel about the soap opera that was once Heartland. The big mistake was they underestimated the importance of Ty. 
you guys, Amber's on the show. She doesn't run any of that stuff. Yeah, and besides, she has like 100 animals she needs to take care of, so. Has a life. She's not sitting on the internet making comments like yeah, this. Like, like, imagine her being like, <clears throat> okay, so, what's on yeah. YouTube? Like, I want to know what yeah. people are talking. I want I want to know what people are thinking about my, about the soap opera that I work on. Yeah, and like, do that and be like, shucks, you know what? You're right. Yeah. You're right. I we're gonna bring him back from the dead. Yeah. You're right. She's like, oh, what keywords should I yeah. use? Amy, Ty, dead. Should I use punctuation? Yeah, should like, I use grammar? I don't know. Yeah, like I imagine her yeah. doing that every day. Me too. All yeah. night. Yeah, that's what she does. Also, on a side note, I really want to know how she has good Wi-Fi in the middle of nowhere. Mm. I don't want to know if Spartan is your horse. What's your favorite episode? None of that. Like, yeah, I don't what's care. What's going on with your <laughs> Wi-Fi? Who's your Wi-Fi provider? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I feel like they need to come on our podcast because we'd really ask the questions that people mm. want to know. Okay. This, I laughed for so long about this comment last night. I was on this Jack and Lisa fan video that somebody made a month, or sorry, yeah, this was a month ago, mm -hmm. and someone commented, I kid you not, I hate my mother, she ruined my life. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not joking though, <clears throat> I'm not joking. Of all okay. the places you could have found that on. To air internet. your trauma, yeah. I guess they felt safe there in the comment section. Yeah, they were like, this is a safe place. This yeah. is a safe place to air my grievances. And they did. This was a different comment. This was kind of positive, but something I really haven't seen anyone say before besides, like, you know. <laughs> besides, I hate my mom. Okay. <laughs> Jay said... Reading a lot of the comments, if they ever decide to move to move Amy on, I really think they need someone who would stand up for her. Ty was such a loving and understanding man, but there and there were times I wish he would have stood up to her up for her more. So much of the characters on this show seem to be self-centered. They need to learn to be more understanding of others' thoughts and feelings. Lou, so many times, was always about what she wanted. Tim was the same way, and I see a lot of it in Amy. Lisa was the only one who seemed to be the understanding one. I thought mm. that was interesting. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it right? sounds like proper grammar and everything. Like, Yeah, it was just a nice, well-thought-out comment. And it's like, I like when they use the right names, you know mm. what I mean? Because then I know they're talking about the characters. This was also a very sweet comment. This one's coming from Michael. As a retired psychologist with 50 years of grief counseling experience, I commend Heartland on the honest and realistic way they have and are dealing with Ty's death. Everyone grieves in different ways and at different paces. These are not right or wrong. They are simply the way the person processes the loss. Heartland has done a superior pre presentation of, the, of grief processing through each character. Life has many sad moments, and they have honestly depicted these. Well done. You know how YouTube has those, like, like some kind of, like, professional reacts to a movie or, yeah. like, show or whatever? Yeah. So I always wanted that someone with that kind of background would react to, mm. you know, Heartland yeah. and, and what's going yeah. on. Because it would be interesting to hear their thoughts, like you know yeah. how they're dealing with whatever's going on because um yeah yeah there's a lot of material that i love to show someone who has a background in well, like some kind of i don't know this reminded me of becky's story about how she related she really personally related with amy's grief process yeah and she said how well it was done and then you have someone who's in a different um different different perspective on it someone who's literally 50 years of grief counseling experience um it's like and both of these groups of people are saying the same thing like that's yeah i mean you know you did it right yeah okay couple more <laughs> sheila said please bring back ty for guest appearances perhaps as the twin who had been adopted and that ty didn't know he had and had been searching for possible family after his adopted family passed away. In searching for family, he learned he has a twin, and 
Ty had died while living and working at Heartland. Therefore, he was curious about the people who knew he knew in the place where he lived. That was on YouTube. YouTube's wild. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know who it was that said something about Heartland being a soap opera. So, yeah. Maybe fitting. Yeah. I don't know. I know. It's crazy. Um, this was, I love the videos on YouTube where, I don't know who makes these, but it's like, meet the real life partners of the Heartland cast. So I went, yeah. Um, and someone commented, Patricia commented in all caps, Graham Wardle married in 2000, no, sorry, 200,015, divorced in 200,018. Whoa. So, talking about it, time traveling. Yeah. Patricia, what I like, what do, what do you know? I know, but Patricia. Give us a scoop, like, something more, like, lottery numbers, something like that. Give us a message to decrypt. That's a little easier than this. Okay, the last, <laughs> the last one is from Bill. This is, every single word of this is in caps. I don't know, this is also under the real-life partners of the Heartland cast same video okay yeah. i don't know if the actors read these or not if so does amy remember in the episode where amy kisses ahmed georgie asked amy why she wanted to hurt ty that way well i would like to know why she wants to wreck the public's memory of ty by looking for a man to sleep with and ruin Lindy's thoughts of her father while looking for a new daddy for ty's daughter think about this amy and then no and then someone replied I agree with you 100%. Thank you for your reply, and God bless you and your family. Huh? <laughs> I know. I don't know. I like, I like how these people say these things as if their family is completely perfect in their real life. Like, they just roast these characters, these non-existent characters, really. We know your three wives left you. Okay, <laughs> so shut up. It, it, it's giving me real life trauma, like you're said. It's it's kind of like there you would be like I don't know, screaming at their mother. Like yeah. seems to be the theme. Like mom, you Mommy ruined my is... life. Oh yeah, there's a lot of angry child inner childs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that have mommy issues. Like I don't know. It's like that's what I'm getting from. Feels this. personal for yeah. Them. Who who hurt you? Who hurt you, Bill? Step into the daylight and let it go, Bill. Yeah. Just let it go. Time to forgive and forget. Yeah, for come back months. next week for another therapy session. <laughs> yeah. That was comments of the week. Um, wow. You really went deep. Yeah, it was it was like obviously I had to go through a lot of nasty comments, so I had to like Xanax myself, but I found a lot of good ones too. Yeah. Good job. Thanks. I actually wanted to talk about this post that I made on Instagram, H2HL podcast. I wanted to know if you have read the Heartline books. I mean, I know that you have, but I wanted to see if our followers have. And 68% said no. And 32% said Yes. So it's um, interesting to see if people actually, now that, you know, we don't have Heartland and we're kind of talking about the books, like, I wonder if people are looking them up now, because I know that someone actually asked us, like, where do you get these books? And I think some of them are at least at Amazon and yeah. eBay so, yeah. and stuff like that. So if you want to collect them all, like Infinity Stones, like look them up. But um, I also asked what people's favorite books were. And um, Wendy Hartland, it had said the third one and the last two, but I love them all. Love how horse focused they are. You read Amy thinking about treatments, etc. Something the series in lacking is lacking in. Oh, there we go. This is show and tell. Yeah. And then Regal Artist said, I can't remember too much about them because it's been so long since I've read them. And I also haven't been able to find them all in German. One that I liked a lot was a special one about Christmas. In fifth grade, I did a book presentation about the first book. 
Then, I, I literally did the same thing. I didn't realize other people did like book reports on it. Oh my god. <laughs> I gotta find mine. Do they still do book reports? Still? I have no idea, but I know somewhere I have this god awful book report about I can't remember what episode. Oh, sorry, <laughs> book. <laughs> I think it's the first one, but I kind of oh, hope that you would find that just to see what you even um, wrote. <laughs> I can picture it in my head, and keep in mind, I was like nine, but the drawings, dear lord, it's like, I don't think I should post it on the internet. Like, my drawing of Amy? No! I that think you should. <laughs> Ooh, who yeah. knows? See if I can even find it first. Yeah. Uh, then Ripplish20 said, I'm not sure one sticks out as uh, as best to me but the thing i like the most about the books is that we see more of how amy thinks which is harder for the show to portray and related to that i like the books where her values her view of the world was really important to her were challenged the most the book where she goes and visits um i believe the native american is the proper term like victor so the one where she visited her father in Australia, the special editions, etc. Yeah. So the book's a little different as you will hear in our interview with um, yeah. like a book specialist. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then HL Horses said, it's been like 15 years since I read them, but I think it was uh, six and whichever one Lou and Scott get engaged in. And then someone like, I don't know, Isabel Sarah <laughs> said Who? six, I don't know, six and three, and then the one with the classes, the emoji. Yep, six and three are the best books. So I'm on Amazon right now, and one book, so for example, most of these books are sold out, but book five is $60. Book three is $80. Um, Whoa. Book is seven um everything else is sold out though oh epi episode i get them so mixed up book 17 is 40 book 13 is 40 16 50 i remember jenna saying to me once though that she collected them no matter how, like repetitively collected the books because she knew they'd be worth a lot so she sells them now she was wrong yeah like um I that's crazy. One book. The book 19, I think that's the one where Lou and Scott get married. 50 bucks. Jeez. Like, they're not even that, like, long. So it's interesting no. that they go so high. But, um, you know, they're high bucks. demand, I guess. Yeah, that's... It's crazy. That's just crazy. <clears throat> I remember yeah. when I collect them, the rest that I didn't have, I just found them on flea markets and stuff. Yeah. You know, that places like that. So... There, they were like a couple of years, like next next to nothing, basically. Um, so we're bringing Beth on. We had I had a lot of fun with this. She is so knowledgeable on this. And if you're watching this on YouTube, and if you're like, why can't I see her face? It's because before we did the interview, we asked if she wants her face visible, yeah. and she said she preferred not to. So it's just her voice, basically. But you can see us sort of engaging with her so it's not all black yeah we always ask uh asks <laughs> we always ask our like fan guests if they want to be actually on because podcasts in general it's just audio mm -hmm. but we do the video form too so we always ask like if you want your face shown or not so yeah sometimes they sometimes they don't and we don't care either way whatever you guys are comfortable with so yeah. if you've ever considered or wanted to come on and talk about something but you don't want to be seen not a problem yeah and um with that said um i hope you enjoy the guest of the week which we'll be having a lot this month so yeah, yeah. enjoy uh this week we have a special guest joining us um and it's actually interesting because when we started this podcast you were kind of the first one of the first people i thought of like we should have over uh, cause, yes because i've been kind of like talking to you over tumblr for years i would say yeah. so welcome to the podcast and yes. can you tell uh everyone a little bit about yourself like who well, you sure. are um, 
Um, I'm Beth. Uh, Beth is Rain Paint on Tumblr, and I actually joined Tumblr, I think, in July 2015 because of your blog. Um, I'd heard about the show, and I was just kind of looking for more, um, I guess, fan information about it, just a way to get more connected to the show. And I, I guess I just Googled, like, Heartland blog or something, and yours came up. <laughs> um, and I've been following it ever since. So um, read the books when I was really young um, and just got into the TV show, I guess, a couple of seasons in. Um, I think my favorite oh, is still season five. I just really enjoy Amy and Ty's dynamic in that season. Um, there's some really funny yeah. stuff with Caleb too. Um, yeah. But I think my favorite character is probably Jack. I don't. I just really connected with the character of Grandpa Jack, um, and mm. he's so different than he is in the books. He's so much better developed in the show. Um, I just like him a lot. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, you especially have stood out to me on Tumblr because of your love for the Heartland books. And that's oh, yeah. sort of what we're going to talk about today because you're kind of the expert of the books, I would <laughs> say, like from my yes. perspective. Like an encyclopedia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all, I read them so much as a middle schooler and it just, they stuck in my mm -hmm. head. So yeah, it kind of is like an encyclopedia in my brain of Heartland book information. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, I believe it. Yeah. So how did you come across the books again? Um, so I was the kind of kid who growing up uh, would go to the library and just get like stacks of books and read them all in an afternoon. <laughs> and I guess it was pretty close to when they were first published. Um, I know it was the summer of 2002 that I first picked them up at the library. Oh and um, I just remember sitting in the chair in the living room at the house where I grew up and just reading the first book. And that was it. Like I was obsessed. I loved them. Um, I can't remember if the horse obsession came first or if the Heartland books caused the mm. horse obsession, <laughs> but I was definitely the yeah. horse, probably age 12 to about age 18. Um, and they played a big part in that. Mm. Um, and I was just hooked. I loved, I don't know. I loved Amy's point of view and just how they were different from other middle school books that I'd read, um, just with the themes that they dealt mm. with. And again, the horse factor was a big part of it too. Yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah, that was the same probably for all of us, right? When we first started the books and the show. Yeah. All in our horse girl phase. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so what is it about the books that made you like them so much? I know you said mentioned the horses a little bit, but like, is there um, like something else that made you come back and read them all like many times? Um, I think part of it was just how compelling I found Amy and Ty's story in the books. Um, so it's a little bit different from the show, a little less dramatic. They still had their conflicts, but it wasn't like get back together, break up, get back together, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. It was more like right. disagreements occasionally over how to handle um, different horses and things like that. Um, and I just thought that Amy's just Amy's point of view was so interesting. All the books are from her point of view and just the right. fact that is more psychological is the word that I always use. I don't know. It was deeper, deeper themes than a lot of middle school books that were I out see. at the time that I read, at least. Um, just, uh, just like in the first episode of the show, in the first book, Marion dies, and just mm -hmm. the fact that this book and then the couple after that just dealt with that so strongly. I guess that really resonated with me as like a a, a sensitive, you know, teenager and kid. Uh, did you read other hard horse books, or was it just like Heartland? I did. I read a few other series. Um, I remember reading like the Thoroughbred series and things like that. Um, but I think what appealed to Heartland was that it um, took place in a more condensed period of time. Like they just span a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Amy is in 10th grade in the first book, I believe. And then she goes to college in the last book. So it's just kind of that short time period. Whereas I know with the Thoroughbred series, they span like 20 to 40 years. And so like characters are getting old and dying. <laughs> oh my <laughs> <laughs> Heartland's much happier. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it was just, I read them so many times growing up. Um, and just the different horse stories. I, I thought that the whole um, join up and like using different kinds of remedies were so interesting too. Like I learned all about that just yeah. outside of reading the Heartland books too. I just found that so compelling. <laughs> Even yeah. though I did I never had a horse or anything like that. I just loved reading about it. Yeah, that it was, was the same thing for me. Like I read other horse books, but then Heartland was just different with the, like, herbs and, like, uh, the yeah. natural horsemanship and everything like that. I was just like, yeah. whoa, what is this? It yeah, was, like, exactly. almost like the first of its kind, in a way. Because mm. it was yes. just, I don't think any other book 
like because it was so holistic at the same time and mm -hmm. when when you think about those horse books like for example chestnut hill it's all about these like hoity-toity horse people right in the horse world <laughs> and heartland's just more about you know family and the horses it's just yeah. um i think that's probably makes a big difference too yeah and i know part of it for me too is that the even though amy was in high school in the books a lot of the drama didn't come from her being in high school. It was just about the horses and family stuff. And right. I was homeschooled, so I couldn't yeah. relate to like high school drama, but I could mm. relate to family issues and just more, right. I guess, interpersonal emotional conflict. So that was, it was easier for me to relate to that. Thinking now as an adult, do you think the books are uh, too childish for adults to read right now, like at your age or? I've thought about going back and rereading them, honestly, um, just because I have so many good memories of just specific plot lines mm -hmm. and scenes and things like that. Um, I think just personally where I am in life right now, it's hard for me to concentrate on <laughs> reading. <laughs> so that's my only thing. As far as if they're too young for other adults, I think if they want to reread them, go for it. You know, I think that there's really interesting um, just themes and topics <laughs> and yeah, no, I think that that's one of the reasons that they stood out to me from other middle school books too although I've read other books that I read in middle school mm -hmm. just for fun too but yeah I think that they're kind of even though they're targeted to middle school audiences and maybe a bit into early high school mm -hmm. um All right people like books, go ahead and reread them <laughs> or pick them mm -hmm. up for the first time absolutely um when when would be the last time that you've read the books then um, I think it was probably late high school, so I t maybe 10 or 12 oh, years wow. ago or so, but I still remember a lot because <laughs> um, I've gone back to different mm. books like for writing and things like that. Yeah. How often would you say you've read them through, through all of them? Like, Oh, probably once a year, like all of them once a year. Yeah, yeah. for that six or seven year span of time, just because I love them so much. And it they... um. They came out with the last one, I think, in 2005. So I think even up until then, I was rereading all the other ones in preparation, like, for the last one to come out. Mm, right. Because there's uh, 20 novels and yep. five special editions. So that's that might seem a lot, but they're quite short, I would say. Like, if you're a fast yeah. reader, you can kind of go through them in a couple of hours, maybe even mm -hmm. less. Well, is there anything in in the books that you prefer over the show and vice versa? I think I'll always love Book Tie the most just because part of it was like mm. I was in middle school and he was like this ideal guy. <laughs> yeah. um, I think I think we've talked yeah. about it a little bit before. In the books, he was very much like a boy next door kind of thing. Um, and I think that that was one of the mm. reasons when the show first came out, I was part of like a little Heartland online forum and all of us were like, what is happening? What are they doing to Ty in this show? He's a juvenile delinquent. What's going mm. on? Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I, after watching the show, I did grow to like the way that they did Ty's character there too, at least most of the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, and I guess, yeah. in the books, like I said, I'm not super into like teenage drama. So I guess I liked Amy and Ty's mm relationship the way that it panned out in the book but at least in the show they ended up getting married they never got that far in the books yeah um as far as the show though jack jack like i mentioned is my favorite character and he got so much more development in the show than in the books um that now i can't even really remember what jack was like in the books just because he's such this mm -hmm. i don't want to say larger than life character because he's very down to earth i think but it's just better developed and just feels like a real person right yeah and just just the extra characters that they added in the show you know caleb's not in the books uh, mallory's not in the books and i love both of them so just getting to know yeah. other characters in the show rather than the books i think yeah. is the main thing for the show with me is there a story from the books you wish they would have done on the show as well i know I personally kept waiting for them to do like a hurricane episode because that that yeah. was something they did in the books. I mean, there there was that big storm a couple of that seasons was, ago, oh, yeah. but <laughs> I think I was kind of waiting for the yeah. same one too. I know that they did a little bit of a tornado. Um, I think in a recent season, right? Mm. Um, but yeah. it wasn't like like in the books it destroyed a barn. It knocked Ty out into a coma for months, and like I that was so. <laughs> different from other books that I was experiencing, like I said, so that would have been something exciting in the show. I think they might have played it for a little bit 
more drama than there was in the books, but um, mm. that would have been really interesting to see. Um, and one that I wish that had gotten more development, I think that they did have a couple of episodes where they dealt with a foal named Daybreak. Um, Melanie yes. was the mom, Daybreak was the foal, and yeah. that spanned a couple of the books, and I just loved that plot with with the baby horse. Um, so I guess if that had gotten a little bit more development in the show, I would have really liked that. Especially in season one, they did a lot of plot lines that were very similar to and following along with the books, but then they kind of branched yes. out because they had to, they ran out of material. Mm. Um, so it was just mm. interesting to see those parallels, like in the first couple episodes, especially between the books and the TV show. Well, what would you say, um, what's your favorite book and then what's your favorite moment out of all of the books? So even even now, I think, what, almost 20 years later after reading it for the first time, the sixth book is called One Day You'll Know, and it's the book where Amy and Ty oh kind of get together. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. It's my favorite. <laughs> it's so good. It was like the peak of romance to be the age of 12. You're like um, flipping the pages like, I, that is happening. the book I've read the most out of all of them. Yes, I love yes. book six. So. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and that was part of the ones with the, the storyline with Daybreak, the baby horse, too. So, like, that was a big part of it, too. Just the way that the story unfolded was so good. <laughs> so, yeah, that was my favorite yeah, book. Um, favorite moment. Um, it's a little bit parallel in the show because in the show, Ty still gives Amy a promise ring. Um, but in the very last main book of the show, he gives her a promise ring before she goes off to college. Um, I don't want to spoil that for anybody. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that in case somebody wants <laughs> <laughs> the books and read them for the first time but again that was when I was a little bit older that would have come out when I was about 14 or 15 and that was still like what's going on is Ty proposing to her before she leaves mm -hmm. for college what's going on she's only 17 and this can't be really happening it, it was still just a promise ring but it was still like I said just so romantic and wonderful so I still remember yeah. that vividly to this day and like you mentioned earlier the books are from Amy's perspective whereas the show is kind of more like everyone's perspective yeah. so if you would have to change the point of view in the books like whose point of view would you like to see instead of amy's i would have loved to see ty's point of view just because i loved him so much as a character um and i think if we have time we might get to it a little bit but um I actually wrote a lot of Heartland fan fiction from Ty's point of view, just because I thought he was such an interesting character and I could relate to him a little bit more than Amy in some ways. Um, so it just would have been neat to see things from his perspective a lot of the time. Um, Lou too. Lou is pretty different in the books than in the TV show, um, yes. but they're both really interesting. Um, so either mm -hmm. one of them, that would have been neat to see. If you could ask the author something about the books, what would that be? So I remember when the show first came out, they did a little bit of an interview with Lauren Brooke. Um, and she said that there were going to still be more Heartland books, but then there weren't. <laughs> Not in English. I think that there's like 40 of them in French. Um, and I would like to know just what happened. Like, did they just stop wanting to publish more of them? Did they decide not to because the show kind of took off? I just, I was always hoping for more Heartland books and thought I was going to get them. And then there just were none. <laughs> yeah. So I know, I don't know like a lot of what yeah. goes on in publishing. So maybe they just, I don't know, they weren't profitable anymore. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, you would think that when the show started, like they would have used that opportunity to kind of be like, well, there's books too, you know, and there's. Yeah more coming like i checked i checked amazon.com for so long just to see because that's where we used to go to find out there were new ones yeah <laughs> you know, just to check and see maybe there's something being published but no there never was <laughs> so have you written fan fiction um when it comes to the you've written fan fiction when it comes to the show correct have you written mm -hmm. fan fiction when it comes to the books i did so <laughs> Um, when this book series ended, it was like a beautiful, perfect ending. It didn't tie everything up, but it left things just in a really good spot with Amy's future and her and Ty together. Um, and then when the first special edition book came out two years later, it kind of, at least at the time, it felt like it ruined everything. <laughs> um, so 16 year old Bethany decided to fix it. <laughs> uh, I think it was like 40 chapters long and like, 300,000 words over the next year of a basically a self-insert <laughs> fan fiction and I say self-insert because even though it was from Amy and Ty's point of view I was not very good at like characterizing them so they were pretty mm. much just me <laughs> <laughs> 
but it was so fun. Like it was just so fun as a 16 and 17 year old to just be so inspired to write this fan fiction yeah. to fix my two favorite characters and bring them back together. Um, I ended up taking it down, I think in 2009. And I really regret that. Like, I wish that it were still up there on my old ancient fan fiction account, just so I could go back, even though it's terrible. <laughs> so you don't have it anywhere? It's so bad. Oh, dang. <laughs> But want to read. so you don't even have it anywhere else. I have most of it saved on my computer, oh, and very okay. occasionally I will look back. I let my sister read it, and she was like, Bethany, this is really bad, but it's really <laughs> like, how, how do you want, like, how do you want me to review it? Like, do you want me, <laughs> want me to be nice or like honest? Exactly. I told her, just say whatever you want, really. Please just tell me what you think. <laughs> oh <laughs> but, my god. Um, I, I was going to take it down and rewrite it, and then I realized that I didn't really feel, like, inspired by the plot like I did when I was 16. <laughs> yeah, I kind of just started writing, like, a series of missing scenes, and that one's still up on fanfiction, but I haven't updated it in, like, two years. I still think about it a lot, though. Like, I have... I know what I was going to do with it. I just don't know if I will ever finish it, which makes me sad, but... <laughs> so you've, you're yeah. not writing, writing anything, like, actively right now? Not for the Heartland fandom, no. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> I still, like I said, I still have, like, ideas, and I may just end up posting, like, a chapter, like, this is what would have happened. I promise Amy and Ty would have ended up together in the <laughs> end. Like, what would have happened yeah. in the interim, you know? Like, yeah. I think I could at least do that. <laughs> yeah. So the author of the books also had the Chestnut Hill uh, books. Uh, they were kind of spin off of Heartland, I, Heartland books, mm -hmm. I think, because I've yeah. never read them. But have you? And what you, what did you think about those? Yeah, I was initially really, really excited about them because it was like, oh, okay, Heartland's over, but there's these spin off books that still kind of have something to do with the series. Um, because it's a it's a right. It's based on a writing school that's located where Amy ends up going to college. So she helps out there a little bit. And I was so excited. I was like, is Amy going to be in all the books? Do I get to see, like, still read more about her? Um, but she ended up just being in a couple of the books, which makes sense. You know, they were trying to branch off and have this new yeah. series. I read the first, I think, five of them or so. Um, but for the reasons that I found Heartland so appealing, they weren't as gripping to me. I think I was that much older when they came out, too. I was in my late teens, right. I think, when they came out. Um, but it was more like school drama and relationship drama and then just horse competitions. Um, yeah. So I think that they were really well written. They just weren't as appealing to me as the regular Heartland books right. were. So, I agree with you on that. <laughs> so have yeah. you seen all the seasons of Heartland show at the moment or are you a little behind or like? I think the last full season I watched was season 11. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I watched the first couple episodes of season 14, um, just because I was like, oh, this is really mm. different. I want to see how they're going to handle this. And they handled it beautifully from what I could tell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it still makes me a little bit sad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was just wondering, like, is there something you would like to see on the show? Like, if you're still, like aware of what's happening right now like yeah so i'm still aware. i still follow your blog like every new episode i'm like okay what happened what went on in this episode <laughs> i still want to know you know even if i can't necessarily watch it anymore because of time as far as what i would like to see happen i would like to see um more of cassandra and caleb actually on screen i don't think that that's i don't know if that's going to happen but yeah, it's like, Caleb's just such a character to me, and like they had a baby. <laughs> yeah. So like, it would be nice if they could be on screen and just be friends, like with Amy and stuff like that. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but we'll see. Yeah. I'll be very interested if it does. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will let you know if it does, because I'm, I'm gonna be like, yes, finally. Cause... Right. Exactly. That hasn't happened in a while, so. I do have, I'm very curious, though. So I know in the books, Jack had a girlfriend named Nancy, I believe. I, sure on the top of my head, I can't recall what happened with their storyline in the books. I, I don't know, but is there any comparison between Jack and Nancy and Jack and Lisa? Um, Lisa is so much more interesting. <laughs> um, Nancy was really <laughs> sad. <laughs> But I just think Lisa's yeah. more of a compelling character. Jack and Nancy got engaged in one of the special edition books, and then there were just no more books. So 
Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. So it's been forever. I I thought they broke up, but that's good. I mean, yeah, they got I think their happy the, ending. Uh, I guess. Special edition books. Amy and Lou were worried that they were going to break up because it seemed like they were having some problems, but really they were disagreeing about whether to tell the family they were engaged. Wait, uh, that so... is almost like the show, though. <laughs> it is. They do, do you think they have no way they plan that? Do you think they did they? Oh they my god, did have. they take that I from the books? <laughs> So was the Nancy character like a horsewoman or was there like No. So ah, Lisa was in the books so, no. but just in I think the third book, the third book with yeah, um prom. Just book three. Yeah, but that was yeah. kind of it. Um and then they introduced Nancy yeah. like in the later books, just um she was friends with Jack and his wife before his wife died. Like she and her husband were friends with them. And then he ran into her at the hardware store. And then they started going out. Oh my god. <laughs> But, like, in the books, like, Jack wasn't, like, a cowboy or anything, like... No, they didn't so, bring in, like, yeah. cattle farming at all for him. He was just kind of there. He yeah. cooked. I remember that he cooked. Mm. <laughs> yeah, he, he, was just he was still very supportive and sweet, but he's just much more of a well-rounded character in the show, I'd say. Mm. Well, this has been fun. Thanks for joining us. And, yeah, thank you, know. you both so much. I loved answering okay. these questions. Yeah. <laughs> if you end up catching up on the show let us know so you can come back and talk about it because i'd love to know what you think about what's going on now yeah yeah i will that that sounds great whenever i have the chance i'm gonna start I, is it on i know you get this question all the time i will check for myself <laughs> <if it's on. laughs> well it is on some parts of, of the world but like okay you know i think most countries have at least 13 seasons some have 14 mm -hmm. so i know i have 14 yeah so you might have um, more than just 11 seasons right Sounds now it's good okay yeah i'll check and see yeah thanks for joining and uh, i'll see you on tumblr all right sounds great you both have a good rest of the day <laughs> yeah you too you thanks. too bye bye, bye. So that was our episode for this week. Um, I very much enjoyed it and I'm hoping she can come back on in the future. Yeah. Um, so thank you for thank you to Beth for taking time to do that. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. So I guess until next week. Oh, I guess we should say our first cast member guest is next week. Yeah. Our yeah. guest members. Oh, plural. Sorry. Yeah. Members. Hmm. Yeah. hmm. Should that give I know. you a clue? I don't know. I know. I really can't believe this is our life. I'm not even going to lie. Yeah. It's but it's going to be a good episode. Um, and Oh, my um, God. It is so funny, though, when I'm, like, editing it. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, until next week, um, keep your noses clean. And your powder dry. Yeah. And start your year off right. Be nice. Yeah. Happy New Year. Cheers. Happy New Year.